Okay, so on this channel, I reviewed a bunch of these laser diode machines in the past, except for one. And that is where this comes in. This is the Sculpt Fun S9. We're gonna see how this stacks up against the competition. And before we get going, I wanna let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one solution to build your brand and your website online. So this diode laser market really has heated up over the last year, last year and a half. And there's kind of three-ish categories that have emerged. The first is the really Really small systems like laser pecker it actually uses a galvanometer to move a mirror around that makes it really fast but also makes the work area pretty small and then we get into machines like this these are these full frame gantry style machines that run on belts and wheels and you've got stepper motors and these are nice because they give you a really big work area and usually these machines will come in a 5 watt option or a 10 watt option so the 10 watt option would be the third highest end version of these laser diode machines now the Sculpt Fun S9 sits right in the middle. This is a four to 5.5 watt laser diode module. And like most of the gantry style diode machines, it goes together pretty easy. Uh, you're just doing a couple screws, hooking up a couple wires. For the most part, you're good to go. I went from box to actually having the machine connected to the computer in about 30 minutes. And on the computer side of things, it's pretty much gonna be exactly the same regardless of what machine you are going to get. You can connect to a bunch of different laser control software. And in my case, I use Lightburn, which I absolutely love. You can not only control diode machines, but you can also control bigger CO2, higher wattage lasers. Pretty much any laser you see me test, I'm using Lightburn to control it. Now the frame is 410 by 420 millimeters. So this is slightly larger than what you would normally find with tour and they also come with an extension kit that will extend these rails to 950 millimeters so over double the length of the machine that's about 100 bucks to add on to the price of this all the mechanics are gonna be real similar to all the other machines. Again, it's using stepper motors. You've got one for your X-axis. You've got one for your Y-axis. And you don't have one on your Z-axis, so this is a manual focus. And so on the back are two screws, and once you unscrew those, this slides up and down on this rail. So you have pretty good range in terms of thickness and being able to get things in there. And in terms of focus, this is a pretty common way to do it. They give you this block that is the exact distance that you need to use. You put this off to the side, you unscrew the laser, you drop it down, tighten it back up, and then you remove this block. And then you've got the right focus distance for your material. Pretty much all the diode machines are a manual focus. That's versus something like the Glowforge or the higher end CO2 machines from Ohm Tech that are going to automatically focus for you. But I don't think I've tested any diode machine that's gonna make this automatic. You're gonna have to manually do it. Again, the x D1 is still my favorite in how they actually do the focus. It's a little lever that flips down and then you tighten it down real easy, but this doesn't take any time at all like you guys just saw. Now, one thing to note, I actually have a honeycomb bed that is underneath this right now. This does not come with the machine. This one's actually from Xtool just because that's what I had laying around. But these honeycomb beds are great to pick up because it gives you airflow underneath the machine, especially when you're cutting. Because you can imagine if I was cutting out this piece of wood, that laser beam would be going directly into the work surface and you get a ton of charring, especially on the underside. Now, I really run into issues with that, especially when I'm messing around with plastic. You get this really melted, nasty piece underneath that is not great. So if you're going to do any cutting, make sure you account for the fact that you're gonna to have to get some type of honeycomb work bed or some way to raise your material up so you can get airflow underneath. So you can also get risers for the legs to pull this machine up in case you need to do something that is really thick. And really that is one of the biggest benefits about these diode machines, just in general, is just how portable they are. Um, this is super light. It's a little awkward in terms of the size. I mean, it's not the smallest thing in the world, uh, but they are fairly portable. Um, you obviously could just put this directly on top of your workpiece and you could engrave it. I've seen people do things like tables or really massive cutting boards. Now the laser picker machine is probably the easiest in terms of the mobile pick it up, put it down and engrave. And that is due to how you can control the machine with that one. You can do it through an app. Um, you can do it wirelessly over the computer. But in this case, you're gonna have to connect it directly to your computer through USB. This doesn't have an SD card slot, so you can't just upload your G code directly to it. You're gonna have to be connected to a computer, so keep that in mind. But if you're set up in more of a permanent space or you just don't mind moving a computer with it, it's still not that big of a deal to move this guy around. Let's talk about this laser module a little bit more. The max power output is 5.5 watts, and they're claiming that you're gonna get a laser dot of 0.06 
which would make this the smallest laser dot of any machine that I have tested. And what that really means is you're gonna get the finest engraving possible because just like with the pencil, the sharper you have the pencil, the more fine of a line you can get versus a real dull one. So as you get a bigger and bigger laser dot, it just makes that marking point a lot more dull. So 0 0.06 is really small, but having this at 0 0.06 is really nice. Now we are actually going to test that in a minute because sometimes the claims these companies make aren't quite right. So one of the big things that I wish SculptFun wouldn't do is claim that this laser is equivalent to a 90 watt CO2 machine. And I can just tell you right off the bat, this definitely is not. This is not nearly as powerful as 90 watts because it is literally 5.5 watts. A lot of times companies will actually give you the power going into the laser. So you might see things in like 60 watts or 40 watts. But if it's a diode machine, just know you're not going to see anything over 10 and maybe 20 if they're doing some pretty crazy stuff with the diode just because physically those diode emitters can't be that strong. So to get those higher wattages, like even 10 watts, they actually put two emitters in there, they combine them together and they focus them down. To do 90 watts would just be insane and not cost effective whatsoever. But a 5.5 watt laser module, is still really nice. You're gonna be able to engrave, you're gonna be able to cut thinner material. It's a great one to start out with. And one thing that's becoming pretty common is some type of filter that's gonna be at the bottom of the laser to help protect you from some of the nasty light that's gonna be coming off. This does a pretty good job of blocking most of it, but like with any of these machines, make sure you're always wearing safety glasses and they're gonna provide you some that will block out the light that is coming so it's not going to harm your eyes. Now, in terms of safety, this was really the only thing that I saw that they provided. Most of these motherboards will have some type of cutoff if there is no movement, so it'll kill power to the laser. There's no motion sensor, so if this gets bumped for whatever reason, this is going to keep running. There's also no smoke sensor, so if there is a fire that starts, it's not gonna kill the machine, it's going to keep on going. So anytime you're running in this machine, be very, very cautious to be watching it as it's going. This also doesn't come with air assist, which again is something I recommend anytime you're doing cutting with diode machines or even engraving. It's just going to be a compressed stream of air that's going to be putting out flames as you are going. For the most part, these manufacturers are starting to provide aftermarket kits that you can add on. It's usually just a tube hooked up to a really small compressor that you run whenever the machine is going. Uh, but no, you're not going to get that right off the bat. Now, one feature that the nicer machines like the Xtool D1 as well as the Atom Stack provide are limit switches. And these are just switches at the ends of the different axes that let this machine know when it's getting to the end. And the big benefit of that really isn't to stop the machine from hitting the edges because it's still going to do that. What it really does is let the software know what is the zero position. So the software actually knows when this laser module is in the front left corner. Now, what I like to do is actually run it from relative positioning when I don't have limit switches set up. And all that means is wherever this is, that is where the software is going to think is the zero position. So it's going to do the artwork starting from here. Now you might be buying a laser diode machine to help sell products for your business. And if you're looking for a place to run your business through, Squarespace is a really great solution. Squarespace is the sponsor of this video, but I've actually used Squarespace a ton in the past, way before I was doing YouTube videos. It actually helped to build a small business where I was writing and illustrating kids' books, as well as a bunch of stuff for makeorbreakshop.com. One of the things I loved about it was just how easy it was. There are a ton of templates that will give you a great start that you can tweak. You can also buy your domain name through there. You can buy a logo. And then one of the most important parts, at least for me, was the ability to sell products. So this could be physical products or digital products. You can even sell coaching services or teaching all that directly through one platform. So you can sign up for a free trial over at squarespace.com. And when you're ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash make or break shop, and you can save 10% on your first website or domain. So let's talk about some tests, specifically how this compares to other machines that are out there. So these are a series of test files that I like to run on this machine. If you guys want to use these test files on your machine, there is a link down in the description. This is going to run this specifically through Lightburn because of how I have the layer set up. Uh, but this is really handy especially when you're doing engraving to kind of know the different values that you're gonna have. So you can see that you have a power versus speed. So I am running this from 1,000 all the way up to 9,000 millimeters per minute. This is three millimeter uh, Baltic birch plywood, and I highly recommend doing something like this on any material that you're going to be using so you can see what the best settings are gonna be as you are engraving and or cutting. Speaking of cutting, I do a quick power test. Um, this is speed going from 100 to 400 millimeters per minute. 
at 25, 50, 75, and 100% power. But then to compare it with other machines, I actually do a bigger cutting test. So this goes from 50 all the way up to 500 millimeters per minute in 10% power increments. Now that tracks pretty close to all the other 5.5 diode machines that are out there. But if you want to see how that compares to a 10 watt machine, this is with the X-Tool D1. Specifically, this is with the Air Assist. And so the cutting isn't gonna be quite as strong. And I actually did a review of that right there if you want to check it out. You can see that it's going to cut at higher speeds and at lower power. So at 10 watts, not only does that mean you're gonna be able to cut through thicker material, but you're gonna be able to do it faster. Now as a point of comparison for that engraving, Engraving test. This is the Alfero 2, which is a cheaper version of the O-Tour Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro, which is always a mouthful to say. And specifically, this is with their short focus module. And the short focus version is for engraving mostly, and the long focus is for cutting. You're actually going a little bit deeper at 100% power with the Alfero module versus the Sculpt Fun, but still overall, you're gonna get pretty much the same performance. The cutting is going to be about the same. And then the big difference between this one and the O-Tour Laser Master engraver to pro is that it has limit switches and it's just a hair bit nicer in terms of build quality. Now another thing they like to show off on Sculpt Fun's website is cutting this really thick piece of material. I think it's about a half inch and you can see that I am cutting that out right now and while it does cut and it does a good job once you get the settings dialed in but no this is more like balsa wood so this is not dense whatsoever uh, and it's really easy to cut through. Um, so don't see this image and think it's like plywood or even pine. If you're going to do something like that, you're gonna to have to take a ton of passes to get through. And honestly, you're gonna wind up getting a lot of charring and the edge may not be that smooth just because it's going to have to take so long and go so slow to get through it. And in terms of engraving, you're gonna be able to engrave a whole assortment of different things. And the one question I get every single time I do a laser diode review is what about metal? And you can with a caveat. So you can't just do straight up raw metal. Uh, you'd actually have to use a fiber laser to do that. And I've done a review on one of those machines in the past, but those are a good bit more expensive. But you can get an engraving effect if you use metals that have some type of coating on them. So if it's like stainless steel, it's basically going to engrave that top coating. It's gonna give you that look that you're probably looking for. Um, or if it's powder coated, you're basically going to engrave off the powder coat and show the raw metal underneath. And the last thing that I like to do to check out these machines is the laser dot size. So I've got a video microscope where I'll take an image. We're going to jump into the computer right now and measure that and see how it compares with the other machines. We're actually going to look at lines that are going in this direction as well as in this direction because if we measure this one we're going to get the laser dot in the y direction. So um, this actually does wind up being pretty close to 0.06. So if I zoom in right here, you can see we're getting pretty close um, to that mark. Uh, this is on plywood, so it's not even. So you can see kind of the thicknesses will vary. And then if we flip this over to the Y direction, um, this is going to be thicker. So this is not going to be 0 0.06. Instead, it looks like it's going to be 0 0.16. And I'm using plywood just because that's the material I used with the other machines. But if I did throw a cardboard and you can see we get a much more consistent line. So you can see that's definitely going to be pretty close to that 0.16. And then if we flip it, so closer to 0.17, but actually probably had the laser turned up a little high. So we probably had some trying on the edges. All right. So how does this compare to the other machines? So 0 0.06, 0 0.07, that really is the value that I am finding in one of the directions. But you can see in the other direction, you're going to be at 0.16. So really the Sculpt Fun is going to be a little bit thicker than the Atom Stack X7 Pro, um, which is still leading the pack if you take an account both directions for the laser dot size. Do I recommend this machine? Sure, I guess it depends on what price you're finding it at. Uh, the O2 or Laser Master Engraver 2 Pro, even the S2, which is like the most updated version, which I think they just added limit switches, is pretty much the only change. It's usually like $20 to $30 more than this, but in terms of performance, you're gonna get pretty much the same thing. Now the Alfero 2, it can be anywhere from like $50 to $100 cheaper than this. Now that one definitely stacks up pretty comparable to this machine, but I think the build quality on Sculpt Fun is a little bit 
nicer. Now, if you're gonna compare this to a 10 watt machine, then you're gonna be adding at least $200 more and even higher if you're getting into something like the X-Tool D1. You might wanna take a look at Niji, especially their 10 watt units. You can get a pretty big one for about 600 bucks. So you can get more work area and a stronger laser for more money, but not like double the amount. But in terms of sculpt fun, I do think this is a great machine. It's not really different than the other machines that are out there, but if it's one that you're looking at, it's definitely gonna do a good job engraving and cutting for you. Now we've talked a lot about O-Tour in this video. We're gonna jump into the Alfero 2 review right here, which I really think is the most direct comparison to this machine. All right, until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. Thank you.